I just want to start this off by saying I'm, I am incredibly grateful. I'm thankful. Uh, anybody who's reached out to me over the past four to six years, ranging from Instagram messages to Twitter DMs to random calls. If you're still streaming the music, I'm appreciative. I mean that shit from the bottom of my heart. Uh, because it's been times over the past couple of years where I've gotten off of work at 2, 3, 4 in the morning and I'm looking at all the equipment and shit just thinking, man, I could sell all this shit right now and be up. You know what I'm saying? I could just duck off. But unbeknownst to me, I'll randomly get a message at 2, 3, 4 in the morning telling me, hey, man, I randomly stumbled across your page. Your shit is fire. Did it didn't keep going. And honestly, that's some of the reassurance I didn't know I needed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some of you may know, I went from trying to pursue a professional career in athletics to one in music. And honestly, they're just two different fields in their own. One's subjective and one's objective. Meaning, if I want to bench three, 400 pounds, all I have to do is follow a workout plan, set it up, follow it diligently, discipline myself, and eventually you're going to get there. Either you're going to get to that 300 mark or somewhere around there. And music in itself operates in the subjective field, meaning you can have 10,000 people telling you, hey, yo, this shit is fucking fire. You the one. And then you can have 20,000 people telling you, hey, yo, that shit is garbage. Nigga, you need to go get a job. You know what I'm saying? And as I've grown as a man and, a, and as an artist, I've tried to navigate in that gray area because to me, that is what makes art beautiful. There are no absolute when it comes to art. Art can be interpreted in so many different ways. And honestly, I, I feel like that is what makes it beautiful. Uh, I fucked up, though, in, in my first stint with music because I came into it with objective mindset. And I'm naturally a hard worker. I'm naturally a competitive person. And... With that being mixed, I was setting up unrealistic, unfeasible goals. And anytime I didn't reach said goal, I literally viewed anything under that as a failure. And yeah, you could be hard on yourself, but also you have to show yourself some grace. And I wasn't doing that shit for years. Um, and then also, if you do that, you're, 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 you're doing a disservice to the art. And I did that shit with my last project, uh, Better Than Myself. We dropped that shit in 2020. And I just want to preface this by saying, if you had anything to do with that project, um, if you made a beat for it, if you sat down in strategic meetings for it, if, if, if you reposted it, if you still play to this day, I just want to extend an apology because I did the art of disservice. Um, what I mean by that is, I, I, uh, shit niggas trying not to cry, but I did that shit a disservice. Um, like I said, we dropped it in 2020 and 2020 in itself was such a critical time in the world. Um, it was first global pandemic I, I've ever been a part of. Um, I was across the country seven deep with the homies chasing dreams and shit. We in there sleeping two feet apart. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get it. Uh, it was times we were paying for beats and videos rather than pay for rent. You know what I'm saying? And it's just some things you cannot recreate. And uh, I, with the mindset I had, I disregarded an entire year's journey in, in about three days. You know what I'm saying? We were able to encapsulate and embody such a pivotal time in the world and I just disregarded it in three days. And what I mean by that is, with the mindset I had, I was comparing myself to the Coles, the Kendricks, the the, uh, the the fucking Drakes of the world. And I'm like, all right, bet, bet, bet. I'm going to give this shit needs to go viral over the weekend. Viral. And um, obviously it didn't. So let me give y'all the timetable shit. We dropped this shit October 16th, that Friday. Uh, we had a listening party that Thursday. I'm in the bathroom. I'm drunk. I'm like, all right, bet. Nigga, this shit needs to go up by Monday. If it don't go up, well, I'm about to lock it back in and make some more shit on uh, Monday. Waited Saturday, Sunday. Didn't go. I said, all right, back. Let me lock back in. I locked back in for two more weeks. 
And I made another project called Love, a book project. And it'll probably never see the light of day. But I wanted to release that by February. Uh, I either wanted to drop it for my birthday or Valentine's Day. But if you really look at that, me looking back in hindsight and realizing who realizing how I operate as a man and as an artist, that's just that's unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make business sense and personal risk. You 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 setting yourself up for failure. Uh, I mean that because anybody who knows my personal, if any anybody who knows how I make music, and you listen to a song or play the album of mine, you know I literally put pieces of me in there it's literally me on every track so with letter to myself i had 11 me's 11 babies on that motherfucker and it didn't do the objective standard to which i thought it was supposed to do and with that being said i viewed the shit as a failure so ba basically i had 11 babies just fucking gone i said fuck hurt me you know what i'm saying and then with the timetable of the next project that shit never came out. So now I have 11, 12 more babies just gone. And it, it was taking a toll on me. You know what I'm saying? It fucked me up. Um, it, it Music has always been my safe space. That's why I put my vulnerabilities. That's why I have my insecurities. I put it all on wax. You know what I'm saying? And it was getting to the point where I thought I was failing so much that it was leading directly to, oh, my safe space is tarnished because I can't successfully operate in my safe space. I'm fucked. I, I was I was numb to the world. I had gotten to the point where I just felt like a tumbleweed. I was just blowing in that motherfucker. And I'm trying not to crowd this bitch, man. Not on the first episode. Uh, I had gotten to the point where, where I was borderline suicidal, man. And, and I... It's fucked up because my safe space had become cancerous, you know what I'm saying? And I could, oh man, I'm not one of them niggas that be crying on the internet, but uh, I can just recall a couple instances where where I almost did take my life. One was uh, I had just got through Uber and it was a 12 hour shift. I was up in North Hollywood, up North North by the Coyotes and shit, and I'm driving it's like two, three in the morning. I'm just thinking, like, man, what, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you out here across the country. I got people calling my phone back from the crib, telling me, "Hey, man, so and so sick, so and so dying. I can't do shit for them. I'm out here trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here trying to get it for y'all. I'm failing at that. I, I got people livelihoods in my hands failing, and." I remember driving, and I'm on the elevated ramp. I'm just looking like, boy, I drive off this shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Just to end it. You know what I'm saying? I had gotten so low to the point where I felt like I had nothing left to give. You feel me? And as these thoughts are matriculating in my head, I shit you not, my back tire goes flat. I, I start to hear the and I'm like, no. I make my way off the ramp. I go to the uh, near Chevron Station, I don't even know if that's the name, Chevron, some shit, and um, as I'm changing the donut, I'm just, I got tears, you know what I'm saying, I'm crying for about 30 minutes, I'm changing that motherfucking corner, I'm just like, yo, this is crazy, and from where, I, where I'm from, that's like, we, we kind of make fun of suicide, we don't take it serious, you know what I'm saying, you get viewed on as weak, and it fucked me up, because I'm like, oh shit, I'm one of them niggas, you know what I'm saying? And it fucked me up. And uh, another instance, um, I was Ubering. I was, I was picking up uh, somebody from DTLA, and I'm driving them to Long Beach. If if uh, my LA people know DTLA to Long Beach, like deep, deep Long Beach, in the middle of the day, that shit's traffic is an hour, hour and a half drive. And um, usually I'm a social butterfly and shit like that, but... Today, I just wasn't talking. I was just in my head, you feel me? And she's talking to me. I'm not hearing none of that shit. Uh, and once again, those thoughts come up like, yo, Josh, you failing. You didn't fail to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, what is the point? I got to the point where I was numb. And I 
thought about driving off a ramp again. I'm like, yo, I could just end it right now. You know what I'm saying? And But what really stopped me and what really made me realize, like, hey, Josh, your ass need to take a step back. You need to relax. Is I didn't even give a fuck so he was in the back. And it's one to fuck yourself up and compromise yourself, but it's different when you actually directly affecting somebody right there. And um, that was my first instant. Like, yo, Josh, you need to chill. Let's take a step back. So I get Shorty safely to her destination. Uh, I pull over some random parking lot, and I, I text the homies. Uh, people people that know me know I'm not a paragraph nigga. I'm, I, I hardly type them. I hardly read them. And I'm like, yo, I tell them, like, I need to take a step back. Because if not, I'm ultimately going to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? And niggas try not to cry again, but my support circle from from LA to the NAP and and in between, I just want to thank y'all because without y'all, I wouldn't be here right now. And I mean that shit. I I, I wouldn't be here right now, and I mean that shit. Um, I probably didn't communicate it the best back then, but I've grown as a man and, and as an artist. I just want to say thank you, because without y'all, I promise y'all, my, my moms would have had to bury her baby, but I'm just appreciative, man. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We, we don't talk like that today, but I just want to let y'all know, man, it's, it's all love from this side, bro. Uh, and, and with all that being said, um, if I had to go back and change any step of the journey, I wouldn't, you feel me? Um, just because uh, going through all those trials and tribulations and shit like that, it, it really made me who I am right now. And I'm proud. To be that man and that artist and that businessman, right? That I am right now, I'm proud of that. Um, it, it's it's given me a new perception on life. It, it's taught me to embrace the journey and be where you're at. Uh, I was I just want to personally shout out my man early. He 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 was telling me through my little route and my through my little run and drought. He was telling me, "Hey man, embrace your journey. Be where your feet are at. Be present." And of course, you feel me. That's just, Sounds cliche as fuck. I'm like, man, I'm like trying to hear that shit, but it really changed my life when I started practicing it and really and really realizing how much shit is out of our control. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I got to the point where you focus on what you can do, execute it to the best, and where the cards may fall, fuck it. You feel me? And I just want to thank him on camera, verbatim, vocally. I just want to say thank you, nigga. Uh, I texted him earlier this week, but I just thank you. Uh, it is, and, and with me embracing me and my journey, uh, I, I feel like personally that's what led me to step away from the bug moniker because I wanted to embrace my life. I wanted to embrace life itself uh, because it was times where I would look at my Instagram page and I'm just like, man, that's not really me, nigga. Like, oh, like, eh, it's not me. I didn't want to sell an image. I didn't want to sell. I didn't want to be gimmicky because that's not what my music is. And if you haven't heard a song, I, I implore you to play a song. But I, I put me, I put me real life on tracks. And that's why I wanted to pursue. And that's kind of why I just started going by Josh. Um, even, even, even that's why I started to go uh, shy away from photo shoots just because I didn't want to portray an image and you feel me? I didn't want to sell something. I just wanted to give you a snapshot of life. And that's why I kind of stemmed towards doing more Polaroids and shit like that. Just because it's like, I, 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 want, I want people to embrace their life. You know what I'm saying? I want people to embrace their journey because in social media, you know, it, it can have you trying to escape or fucking looking, looking at shit through a lens. And I'm like, nah, nigga, look at me. I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? And... Plus, if you look up Boog, it's like 30 different Boogs, bro. My first song, I dropped it under J-Boog. That's a Polynesian nigga and a nigga from B2K. You feel me? Like, I'm like nah, I just me. I want to authentically, organically be me. Uh, shit, bro. 
niggas if you're crying and shit, but I say that to say, man, I'm thankful to anybody who's been along for the journey, um, anybody who's been tapped in since since I was booked, niggas who've been tapped in since the Esteban tapes when niggas couldn't rap, anybody fucking been here since J Boog, I appreciate you, y'all. Really do not understand. And I wish you could feel the warmth, feel the warmth that I have. Every time somebody tells me, man, you the one, or you feel me, I just wish y'all could really feel that because it, this shit means the world to me, bro. Uh, and now that we got all the serious, serious shit out the way, I just want to say, if y'all niggas turn this off, use a bitch. If you turn... If you up, I was just bullshit. I was just bullshitting on. But this is not the vibe of this show at all. I just wanted the first episode to actually give some context and actually, you feel me, try to fill niggas in a little bit because niggas could go make a song about some shit. Niggas be like, oh. But, you know, some niggas might actually miss some points and shit like that because they be like, oh, man, this production horror good motherfucker. But it's, it's a different tone when you have somebody actually here vocalizing with you and not over instrumentation, you feel me. Uh, I just had to get the first episode out, but if you tune in next week, you're going to see a whole different show, whole different setup, because this is not the vibe of this show. You can ask anybody that know me personally. They know, oh, that nigga's ignorant. That nigga, hey, you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. We can't bring Josh here. We, we, we got to relax. You know what I'm saying? So this is not the vibe of the show. Don't get this shit twisted. I am a very affluent, very astute nigga, but I say that shit for some for the music and the niggas trying to press some hoes. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? But nah, no, on the regular, nah. All jokes aside, man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Thank you. Um, I see y'all niggas next week. If niggas don't upload, niggas dead or in jail, nigga. Y'all niggas be blessed, man. Who is that flat fat nigga?